Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another. Oh, wow! A moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. So you put the red wire on the positive terminal, the black wire on the negative terminal, and... Hey, cool, it's spinning. How does it spin? Shouldn't all the wires inside get tangled up with it moving so fast? That's a great question, and the best way to answer it is to talk about electromagnetism. For a very long time, scientists believed that electricity and magnetism were two separate forces, but all that started to change in 1820. One afternoon, while preparing for an evening lecture, a Danish scientist by the name of Hans Christian Oersted discovered something quite remarkable. Whenever electric current was run through a wire, the needle of a compass would turn away from north. That meant the electric current also generated a magnetic field. For the next 50 years, scientists continued to study this phenomenon, along with others, eventually unifying the two forces into electromagnetism. The idea that electric current and magnetic fields not only affect each other, but are therefore connected. And it is electromagnetism that makes electric motors work. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. You'll need some enameled wire, a two AA battery holder, two alligator clip wires, all three which are available at your local electronics hobby shop, plus a D-cell battery, two AA batteries, two large paper clips, a ceramic magnet, some masking tape, a piece of sandpaper, and a pair of needle nose pliers. First, wrap the enameled wire around the D-cell battery about 30 to 35 times and cut off the rest, making sure to leave about one and a half inches free on either side. Wrap the free ends around the loops on opposite sides to hold the coil together, leaving about three-fourths inch free on either side. Using the sandpaper, remove the enamel completely from one of the free ends. On the other end, only remove the enamel from one side of the wire leaving the other side with the enamel in place. Bend the two paper clips so the smaller half is perpendicular to the larger half. Tape the smaller halves to the table so that the coiled wire just barely fits between them. Use the needle nose pliers to curl the larger half of the paper clips so the coiled wires can rest on them. Place the ceramic magnet just under the coils. Put the two AA batteries into the holder. Use the alligator clips to connect the wires from the battery holder to the paper clips. Finally, give the wire coil a little spin. So this is a very basic model of an electric motor. The electricity produced by the batteries runs through the wire, up the paper clip, through our coil, then back down the paper clip and opposite wire to the battery, completing the circuit. When electricity flows through the coil, it creates a magnetic field that attracts it to the magnet. The key to it working is this wire here, the one with only one side of the enamel removed. This acts as a switch. In a real motor, this part is called a commutator. If the coil kept its magnetic field constantly, it would just be attracted to the magnet and not spin. But the commutator on our motor constantly turns the electric circuit on and off as it spins, causing the magnetic field to stop and start. This means the coil is never permanently attracted to the magnet, so it can keep spinning. Don't worry if you're having problems getting your motor to run. You're probably not alone. Getting one of these models to work, it's a little finicky. It takes a little bit of work. But once it gets going, it's really kind of cool. First and foremost, make sure your sandpapering is done well. Check for one wire to make sure all the enamel is removed. Check the other wire to make sure half the enamel is removed. The second thing to check will be the number of coils you have. In other words, the weight of it might be too big. You might remove a couple of the coils, cut the wire and re-sandpaper it and see if that works any better. The other things, magnet position, the way your paper clips are bent, all those can affect how well your motor works. So just keep tweaking with it. Eventually it will run and you know, even if you only get a few turns out of it, it's still big success. So good luck. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>